What's up, everybody? Funnel Doc here. In today's video, we're going to be going over High Level's new voice AI. That's right. Since Level Up Day, they released their voice AI. It's amazing. In today's video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about how to launch your own, how to set it up, how it works, the ins and outs. With that, let's jump inside today's video. All right. Now, to access High Level's voice AI, you're going to go down here to Settings. And then you're going to scroll down to AI agents right between Conversation AI 1 and Conversation AI version 2, which we do have a new video coming out next week on Conversation AI 2, so keep your eyes out for that. But you'll click right here for AI agents. Now, right now, you only have the ability to do inbound agents. That's for calls that are calling in, coming into your phone number. So you, of course, will need a phone number in high level to be able to get this. Um, and you can have as many inbound agents as you want, but you can only have one per phone number. Um, on outbound agents, it'll be a different story, but we'll get to that when they release that. One of the reasons why they're not releasing outbound yet is they want to do it very slowly over time so they can watch it because it has the highest chance for um, abuse and things like that. So to access your bot, you're going to come here. Now, what we're going to do first is I have a fully uh, advanced bot build out here. There's two different types of bot. There's basic and advanced. I'm going to first show you and go over the basic and then we'll go over the advanced. Now to create one, you're just going to come right here at the very top and hit create AI agent. You're then going to have your agent name. So we're going to name this one Bob. You've got your business name here. You've got all your different voices. Let's go with Tony. There you go. Nah, let's not do Tony. Let's do instead. Let's do Mark. There you go. And then down here at the bottom, you'll be able to see this is your agent's initial message. This is what the, the agent's going to say as soon as the uh, phone call is connected. Now, mind you, one of the things I found during testing, if you put the agent's name in there, for some reason, the AI doesn't recognize that it's not the caller's first name and uploads that to the contact's first name. I did alert the devs. They could have fixed it by now. I haven't tested it recently, but that might be something for you to be aware of. So once you've got all that set up and you're good to go, you picked out your voice, you've set up your initial agent uh, intro message, you're going to then hit next. You're then going to come in. Now you'll see at the top right here, you've got your switch to advanced mode. Now I am going to switch this one to advanced mode because I want you to see the prompt that they're using. When you switch to advanced mode, you'll be able to see the prompt that's running this bot. Now, you don't have a lot of flexibility with this guy. There are some set things that you can pick. Now, name, email, uh, address, contacts, issue. But the problem is, like, you aren't able to set really what the contacts issue is or how it engages. It's a very generic bot. You'll see in a second once we open up and I show you the prompt, you'll be able to later uh, see that for yourself and be able to see why it makes sense it says contacts issue. Now, this right here is automatically always check, add summary to the notes for the contact. What that means is the AI will do a summary of the call. And if you go under notes underneath the contact that's made for this call, it will actually have a summary of the notes of the call in there. You can trigger workflows from here. Now, you can trigger as many workflows as you want, actually. So if you wanted to come in here and uh, you want, I mean, you might not, maybe, maybe you're only able to do five. I don't see what we can do a couple more. No, I think you can do as many as you want, actually. Yeah, it looks like you can do as many as you want. But you come in here, you can have all these different workflows trigger. And then if you didn't want one of these to trigger, you can see you just delete them like so. Um, and these are going to trigger when the call is complete. Always keep that in mind that this is when the call is complete. So you pick one of these. And then you've got the email notification that's going to be sent out. And you can come in here and you can pick it for all users, users assigned to contact, specific users. You can set up like a custom email. And then uh, once the call is over, you'll receive an email that looks just like this. So you'll get one like this. It says AI call recap. I get that verified. You'll have your call number on it, your call duration, the name of the agent, and then a transcription just like you see here. So once you've decided you got all that set up, you decide what it's going to select. And it's so easy. All you do is just come through just like so. You then would hit next. You'd come in, select what phone number you wanted, set them up. You'll see down below, you can set the working hours for the agent. Now, keep in mind, this is for the agent and not for you. So you want to say, let's say that you wanted it to work Monday through 
uh, Friday, but you wanted to come on at 5 p.m. So you'd come in and there's something you need to pay attention to because of the way that's set up. You'd come in, set this for 5 p.m. And then you'd set this one for 11. Now, mind you, it goes in five minute intervals. So there's gonna be a five minute gap between here, you'd come in and you would say it is There we go, 12, 12 a.m. And then say that you wanted to pick it up at 8 a.m. in the morning. So this is how you'd set up a day. You'd be like, okay, our day ends here. We want it 5 p.m. for AI to take over. There is going to be that little layover gap here from day to day. I'm going to have to alert the devs about it so maybe they can fix it, maybe make it 59. So at least there's just one minute versus five minutes, which isn't huge, but still something to note. And then you've got your next time to where the next work day starts. And then at 8 a.m., the people at the front desk would start picking up the phones again. And then you would have um, AI leave off with that. To have it start again, you'd want again, then just do a split date. You'd come right here and hit the plus. And then you'd have this one again be 5 p.m. To, um, to 12 p.m. Where you could come here and you could copy them as well. So you could come in and you can assign them. So technically, you could come in here and set the first split right here like you wanted it to be, and then 12 this for zero, and then whatever time it is, and then you can just assign it to all of them. So you come in here as well, and you'd be like, oh, I want it for this day, and then now we'll add it to all the days. So that's if you want it to work for your agent to have set hours, if you don't want it to be on all the time. If you do, you'll set it as so, you'll hit save when you're done. And now your agent is technically live and can be called. And we'll do a demo call towards the end of this, now we'll go back into Bob right here. I wanna show you something. If you go under agent goals right here and go into the advanced mode and switch it over, you're gonna see now here is the prompt. And I would take some time out and read this prompt and you'll understand. Even if you're gonna use the basic mode and nothing else, I would read the prompt because this is the basic prompt that it's running off of. Now you are able to have up to 2000 words in your prompt. Now let's jump out of here. We're gonna jump into my other bot that I've got all set up here, got everything set up and we're gonna go over the different things. So here is your prompt. Now, as far as your prompt goes, I mean, the way I've got it set up, you know, they show you example. I try to stay very similar to their example um, just because um, I figured out initially that uh, they probably tested enough that that's a good format. And I like the format too. It's usually the way I write prompts anyway, where it's like overall basic information, per personality, what are your goals, that type of stuff, um, you know, rules. Um, and then we'll go into context of the call, you know, what is the script supposed to be like, what's the overcoming objections, how do you handle objections, yada, 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 that type of stuff, get down into any more important rules, and then go into information. Now, mind you, there is no um, knowledge base in here, so once you've got in all your different basic stuff about how they're going to handle stuff, what the call to flow is going to look like, you're going to want to put all your information in here that you might have it. If it was scraping another website or you had a knowledge base, you want to put it up here up to 2,000 uh, words. Again, mind you, com uh, custom variables and custom fields do not work in here. I've tested them before. So up for right now, it, up to right now, it is only words. Now, the way that these bad boys work here, the next thing are your actions. This is one of your big differences between the basic and the advanced other than having so much control over the actual prompt. Now, your first one is just a basic call transfer. You'll come in here and um, let's say you wanted to set someone up. You can click down here at the bottom or they'll have a demo one that's ready for you. You'll click new. You'll see it'll pop up right here. Then and the way that's good with this, now you can either have it transfer to one person or um, I found, I talked to the devs, the sweet spot for total amount of actions per call is about seven to 11, somewhere right around in there. I usually set it for about 10 different things depending on how many different things. And mind you, all the actions might not occur depending on how you create them. But if maybe you're using the voice AI as a um, receptionist or something to disperse calls, you could technically have like 10 different people here and have it recognize, oh, they want to speak to Jeff. Oh, they want to speak to Laura. They want to speak to Steve. So, you know, this could be for Steve. And you'd come in here, you put Steve's phone number, and then when should the call transfer take pay place? It'd be when the caller wants to speak with with 
speed, something similar to that. And then underneath it, you want to put what is the actual bot going to say um, once it's transferring the call. And usually on mine, like you'll see right here on this one, let's delete this guy. And you'll see there's a delete key down here. You see on this one I had where it's transferring to me. We got my phone number when the caller wants to speak with a human or a live assistance. Um, I don't, I, um, I haven't, I haven't, I've only tested it once and it, it could, it was because I was calling on the same line, so it couldn't connect me, but um, I'm not sure how well it does yet with multiple uh, addresses like that. It should be fine, but that's how I had this one set up. And then here's what it's going to say. One second, I will transfer you Jeff. He's one of our best and will help you right away. Um, and then, so that is setting up calls. That's one of the things it could do. And mind you, each one of these actions um, count as one of the 7-Eleven I was telling you about. So you can see here, I've got one, I've got five, uh, 10 set up on this one, actually. So the next thing is trigger workflows. Now, this can happen at any time during the call. This is really cool. It's dynamic. So during the call, they can be like, oh, uh, I've got this one set up for um, a payment link. So if any time during the call, the person wants to sign up for Divine Connect Pro, you, the um, bot will then send them an email that has a payment link in it that they can sign up. And then you'll see this, that he'll be like, I'm glad you're ex uh, excited about trying Divine Connect Pro. Divine Connect Pro, just fill out the form real quick and you can get and we can get you started, you know. And they've got one for a PDF for more information where they're if they seem they need more information, they'll be like, oh, I'm gonna send you a PDF. And then they're like, okay, I just sent over the email with the PDF, let it requested. And then when the caller wants more info, you know, for it, and then you just come in to pick these. You just come into your workflows and pick whatever one you want. Unlike before, though, you can only pick one per workflow, where the other one you can pick multiple different ones. Uh, for the end for the end workflow, you can only pick one of these per workflow. And then for the next one's like a call review, I have it set up. So if the person asks for they want to do a review, caller wants to leave a review, it will then send out the IAI review workflow. Hey, I just sent over the email with a reviewing for it. Thanks for that. Um, and then you could add more. Same thing. You just come right here at the bottom and hit new workflow trigger. Just give it a name. You pick whatever workflow you want them added to. What is the trigger going to be? Oh, they're curious about scriptures 51 through 100 or whatever it is. And then whatever you want the bot to say once the workflow has been triggered. Mind you, one of the things I found, um, they're sending like, hey, I'm going to send that, for that email. The bot might say, hey, I'll send that email right over. And then you might have in there like, I'm like, oh, I just sent the email right over. So it, sometimes you want to tweak it a little bit, just like anyone that's worked with AI before and worked with prompts. The first prompt is never the last prompt. You're going to almost always have to tweak it, tweak it more than once. You might have to, you know, stack uh, layering prompting. It just depends. But um, it's never going to be the first. You're going to want to do multiple test runs with it, testing both these engagements, how it replies with these triggers once they go off to make sure it sounds fluid and makes sense. So the next thing we're going to want to do is come in here now, update contact fields. Now, this is a big one for you to pull information out of the call. Now, standardly, they have first name, last name, and email are in here, standard no matter what. The rest of them are going to be whatever contact field you want to create so or have created. So you come in here, you hit contact field, you just name it. Let's say that they wanted to pull a webinar date because I have that as a contact field in here. You come in and you just type webinar and then you go webinar time and date. So now and then you was like, when do you want it to update this field? When the contact tells their contact, sorry, tells you what time and date they are watching the webinar. There you go. So you'd have something like that. So during the call, if the contact was like, yeah, I'm set up for Thursday at 1 p.m., it would now pull that information on the call and update this time. These aren't sequential by any means. Even if you set it up in the call, I always set up in the prompt my script on how I want the call to go in what order. Um, I've tested this. Is At the beginning of the call, I'm all of a sudden like, hey, uh, my church problem is this or whatever, and I answer them out of order. It will pull them out. It's like it's constantly scanning for the information. Um, and then, like I said, first name, last name, and email are automatically put in there. And then any other ones you wanted, you just make the field, and then you just create it. So the last one we got here is send SMS. This is just sending a text message. So for this example here, I've got the text PDF 
where uh, I wanted, I was just doing some playful stuff where when they send the PDF with me an email, I tell them my email is not working. It's in a text or whatever it is. So it's like when the caller states that email is not working, your SMS is best. So there, if I tell them that they, they're initially sending them PDF via email, if I tell them my email is not working well to send me an SMS, they then send the text message. Uh, and then they're going to say, no worries, we just sent the text over. So those are the ones I've been testing out. And there's a ton of different stuff you can do. Then at the bottom, you'll see here, you've got just like before the ability to trigger multiple or singular workflows at the end of the call. And then you've got the different users and who's going to receive the end of call message. Now, let's go ahead and test this guy out. We used to have the ability to call yourself. Um, it doesn't work for inbound calls, or at least that I've found so far. So I'm going to use my cell phone here. We're going to just test it out um, in that way. So uh, let's go ahead and just make that call. Hey, you have reached the Vine Connect Pro. How can I help you today? Hey, um, I'm, I wanted to learn more about the Vine Connect Pro. Great. I'd love to tell you all about it. But first, could you share your name and email with me? Yeah, my name is Jeff Bannick. The last name is B-A-N-E-K. And my email is support at divineconnectpro.com. Thanks, Jeff. Could you spell out your email address for me to make sure I got it right? Yeah, how about this? I'm just going to tell it to you. It's support at divineconnectpro.com. Got it, Jeff. So you're interested in learning more about Divine Connect Pro. Are you currently using any other search software or CRM? Yeah, I'm using Breeze software right now. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Divine Connect Pro is designed to make your life easier by streamlining communication, automating social media, and managing donations all in one place. What's the biggest challenge you're facing with growing your search right now? Um, getting people in the door and then nurturing them so that we can get them to come to God. And you, of course, could have whatever your different. Is. It's really good about it if you interrupt it. So I put it on pause. So I, I'm mute right now. Hey, could you do me a favor and send me more information about it? Okay, I just sent over an email. We're going to test out the yes, workflow. Oh, wait, wait. My email is not working. Can you send me a text instead? No worries. I just sent it over via text. I've sent the information via text. Let me know if there's anything. See right there how it said it twice? And then there's a text message. Right. There's a text text message I got there. Do you have any more questions? Yeah. Um, question real quick, too. Uh, could you do me a favor and tell me what the specials are for Divine Connect Pro? So I won't I won't waste you guys and can I'll cancel and waste your time on that. But you'll see all the workflows have fired out. So there you go. That's how to set it all up. Little bit of a tip here, anyone that's having trouble with A2P, one of the things you can do is you can actually sign up for an 800 number. If you're not using the local number, sign up for an 800 number. Um, it shows like all big businesses have them, no big deal, but the A2P processes are very much uh, less restrictive. Unlike the other one where you have to have like an EIN for your business, you can sign up for an 800 number, be able to get ta uh, tax set up in a day or two and not have to worry about the restrictions, as well as you save the $20 a month fee that they charge you for your A2P fee. Um, with that being said, thanks so much for watching today's video. We're going to have a new video coming out every day, breaking down everything that they talked about during a uh, high levels level update. Thanks. What's up, everybody? Funnel Doc here. While you're deciding which video to watch next, I just wanted to say, hey, if you know anybody that's interested in working with us, we'd love for you to be our next million dollar case study. We've won multiple awards, generate over 50, uh, it's like 53, 57 million now since we started for all of our clients. And we'd like for you to be the next client that we uh, have an award for or have some amazing testimonial. Um, we uh, specialize in funnels, funnel ecosystems. Anything having to do with high level launching white label SaaS, creating webinar funnels, courses, pretty much anything in the info product space, coaching space, or anything having to do with online sales funnels. And we do the whole ecosystem, AI, uh, info, uh, emails, copy, we do it all. So if you're interested, there's a form down below, and I'll talk to you soon. Phone lock out. Peace.